So should you buy investment real estate right now? Keep watching. So you're on the fence about buying a duplex or triplex, a fourplex, or even a house. You don't really know if this is the right time to buy. In this video, I'm going to cover some helpful hints for you to decide. So you realize that inflation is going through the roof and the interest rate, every time the feds meet, it seems like it's gonna go up a quarter percent. And that means that that's going to, in essence, cool off the housing market. Now I can understand why people are concerned. Should I buy right now? The interest rate's going up. If you buy it as an investment that you're not gonna live in, you're gonna pay a higher interest rate, but it's still a lot lower than it could be. Back in the early 80s, people were paying 14, 15% interest rate. So we don't have that right now. I'm not saying we can't get there, but probably most likely not. One of the ways that the government uses to cool off the economy or to control is to, to raise the interest rate or lower the interest rate. Now, even as an investor, if the interest rate keeps going up for regular homeowners, it's gonna go up because it's gonna affect the amount of money that you borrow. Before I get into the opportunities out there, I want you to go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure on that subscribe button. So let the algorithm and myself know that this content is worthy. Don't let people tell you that it is not a good time to buy. Case in point, when I was buying real estate in my 20s, a lot of people told me, don't become a landlord and don't do that and you know, don't get into real estate. It's too risky. You're going to lose your money. You're paying too much. All of these naysayers about real estate ended up later telling me how they wish they got into the market. The one thing is for sure, there is no shortage of opportunity. You can't afford a home here. Look somewhere else. You can't be in this neighborhood. Cross the railroad track. Go somewhere else. You can't afford in that city. Go somewhere else. There's constant opportunity in even hot markets. You'll find opportunities. When homes are on the market and the days on market are really high because they're overpriced, expired listings are one way, or you see a house that's run down, knock on the door, see if they'll take an offer. But for all of these things to happen, you have to be in the right position. And I'm gonna talk about that next. Opportunities are always there. That means that you might have to spend a little time looking and searching for the properties, but every market has a great deal. You might not always find it on the market. You might not always Always get your realtor to give it to you but you got to hustle to look for the opportunities because everybody else is looking for them so always know regardless of the marketplace it's not a good market or bad market it's just a market and to take advantage of the market there's always an opportunity to be had before you find that perfect property though make sure that you are ready your finances are in order you have down payment or access to hard money or you have your financing in place the worst thing is finding that right product because you've been hustling and looking and asking and telling and doing whatever to find that opportunity now you have the opportunity, but you can't finance it. So make sure you're ready with your financing. Make sure you're willing to take the risk needed to buy an investment property and that you are able, that you have the resources you need, whether you're going to flip the property or hold on to it for a long time. Make sure you have the right people by you to make sure that it can be financed, that you can go through the escrow process, that you have someone that can guide you during, if this is your first time, make sure you have some mentor or someone that's going to guide you through the landlord tenant laws, all of those kind of things. Make sure you you have that support system handy and if you don't make sure you do your research before you press or sign that on that dotted line so i want you to be able to be prepared before you buy a property the other thing is know your numbers now i'm not a math whiz i'll just tell you that that's why i have bookkeepers and accountants and people to watch my finances for me i'm not your numbers guy and i'm not tedious with it i didn't do a bunch of spreadsheets i look online sometimes and watch other people's content as well and i'm amazed people have these long drawn out spreadsheets and they know to a dime how much money the, the property is making. Unfortunately, sometimes you miss out on deals because you're so enamored or you do so much research about the opportunity. Now, I want you to know your numbers roughly, know how much it's gonna cost, how much it's gonna cost to maintain, how much money is being generated, how much the washer and dryer is pulling in every month. Know all of those numbers for sure, but don't hyper analyze something before you make a decision. In this market, it's going to pass you up, someone's gonna put an offer in, and before you know it, the property is gonna be gone. Have a goal in mind. What is your goal? What do you want to do? Do you want to buy a condo? Do you want to buy a duplex so that you can live in one and rent out the other one? Do you want to buy a fourplex because you know at least four or five people at work that are going to rent from you? Whatever your goals are, jot them down and then go through the process. But it's important to know what your goals are as an investor. Now you've gotten in the house. Now you've gotten the property. Either you're going to rent it out. Very simple. This video is to not make it complex like, hey, buy my 
my shitty ass courses in the back and that's the only way. I'm gonna give you real world advice. How do I know? I own more than 50 real estate properties and I just kind of learned by doing. So it's not rocket science. You can figure this out. What you need to do is to be able to understand the process. So if you're gonna be a landlord, understand landlord tenant laws. If you're gonna be a flipper, understand if there's impacts to your taxes according to what state you're in. If you're gonna just go ahead and fix it up and live in it for a while, that's a different approach. So know which avenue you're going to take, but always know that if you get the property under market, it's kind of those Captain Obvious things, but I want you to understand this, is that if you are able to purchase it below market and increase its value by either cosmetically or adding more square footage, I've bought properties where it was mismanaged, where the rents were extremely low because they didn't feel like they wanted to be uh, mean to the people or it was relatives or what have you and the property was way undervalued because the rent that we're bringing in. You know, you can understand like, okay, you're gonna move in, you're gonna buy that particular property, and then you're gonna push up the rents to market rents over time, or you're gonna kick out or pay off people and go in there and fix up the units and then move people in. Whatever your strategy, know that you can increase its value by making it better. That's where the gap is. If you buy a business, you gotta know you can make it better and more profitable. And those are some of the things that you need to look at before you buy real estate. And is this market a good market to buy real estate in as an investment? Absolutely, if you follow those guidelines. Now, if you fix and flip, and this is your first time, I probably wouldn't do it based on what's happening in the marketplace. I'm not saying don't flip homes. What I'm saying is don't flip homes in highly competitive areas, and this is your first time. If you want more investment advice like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you wanna find out other ways to invest wisely, go ahead and watch this video next.